In this video, I'm going to demonstrate two ways to test the assumption of homoscedasticity. The first way is based on an examination of a scatter plot, and the second way is based on a correlation. So, just some background that the assumption of homoscedasticity implies that the variance of the residuals is equal across the whole continuum of the independent variable. In plain language, the assumption of homoscedasticity implies that the prediction equation is equally good for the entire spectrum of the data. So let me backtrack and do the actual regression analysis to get things going. Put education in the independent box, earnings per day in the dependent box, and click OK. I'm trying to predict earnings per day based on education. And we can see that there's an education unstandardized slope of 7.609 which implies that for each year increase in education, we expect an extra $7.61 a day earned by people. Now, there's also a standard error associated with the unstandardized beta weight, and that standard error is 3.447, and we use that value of 3.447 to help calculate the t-value, which is ultimately used to help estimate the p-value, which in this case is less than 0.05, and it implies a statistically significant effect. So if I divide the point estimate by the standard error, I get the t-value. Two point two zero seven, two point two zero seven. So the assumption of homoscedasticity is there so that we can be confident that this standard error is accurate for the whole spectrum of the data, not just one portion of the data. When heteroscedasticity is present in the data, it implies that there's different levels of variability in the predictive capacity of the equation. And you don't want that. You want to be able to say that the regression equation you're using works for everybody. So how can we go about testing that? Well, one simple way, which involves no real statistics, is looking at a scatter plot that you can do automatically in SPSS or semi-automatically, go into plots, and we'll use the predicted value as the x-axis and also the standardized residuals on the y-axis. So z predict and z resid. I've covered in another video what these two variables are, so I encourage you to check that out. Click continue and click OK. So here we get the scatter plot. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Here is the scatter plot of predicted values and the residual. And you'll recall that the residual is how much of an error the regression equation made with respect to predicting individual values in the data set. Now, when homoscedasticity is present, which is what you want, really all you'll see is kind of like a circle like we see here with dots in no particular pattern. And you'll typically see this in typical bivariate regressions. Most of the time, you will satisfy the homoscedasticity assumption. And when you do, based on the visual examination of the plot, there'll be no pattern in the data. Now, as I mentioned in the textbook, just trying to look for a pattern in the data is a bit of an art rather than a science. I then encourage you that if you don't want to do any statistics whatsoever, in terms of actual statistical analyses, at least convert residuals into absolute values. So I'm going to have to reanalyze the data to get those residuals. I'm doing this because I have to do a bit of a manipulation with the data. I can't just use the automatic plot in SPSS. So Z predict and Z residual. And what I want are absolute values of these residuals. It's going to be easier to detect a pattern in the scatter plot. And it also helps me conduct the second way to do the test of homoscedasticity which is the Pearson correlation. So transform. Fortunately, we can do this pretty quickly. And we'll call it ZRE1 absolute. And if we click on the all function group, we'll get absolute here. Double click on that, and that shows up in numerical expression. And I want the standardized residuals to be transformed into absolute values. Click OK. And so now I've got this a residual absolute value and I've got the predicted standardized values and I can create a scatter plot out of that to see if there's any pattern in the data. Usually it'll be easier to see a pattern using the absolute standardized residual 
rather than just a regular residual. So I'm putting the absolute standardized residual on the y-axis and the standardized predicted value in the x-axis and click OK. And I still don't see any pattern in the data. So what you'll see is some kind of pattern. To be honest, it depends on the type of heteroscedasticity that will reveal a particular type of pattern in the data. But overall, it's a bit of a bird's nest. There's not really anything going on here. Now, again, it's an art rather than a science to try to argue whether something's going on in a pattern of data. And that's why I argue in the textbook Unfortunately, people don't do this very often, even though it's perfectly, you know, I would say it's a much better approach. Run a correlation between your predicted values and the absolute values. And if you find a correlation between the magnitude of a predicted value and a absolute residual value, then you have evidence for heteroscedasticity. So here's the correlation between my predicted values going from low to high and the absolute values. So analyze correlate bivariate, standardize predicted value, and the absolute value, and click OK, and we get a correlation of 0.178. Because the correlation isn't statistically significant, we fail to reject the assumption of homoscedasticity. And so I'll do the correlation again with a Spearman correlation if you feel more comfortable with that. Spearman and it's still 0.156. So because the correlation is non-significant between the predicted values and the standardized absolute values, we can say that the assumption of homoscedasticity has been satisfied. And also, if you want to use the more artful technique rather than fully scientific, you can look at the scatter plot of standardized predicted and absolute standardized residuals and say, well, look, there's no pattern in the scatter plot. Therefore, I can assume that the prediction equation is working equally well across the whole spectrum of the data, from low scores on the x value to high scores on the x value. And that means from low levels of education to high levels of education, the prediction equation is working equally well 